Hey everybody, it's Aubrey and today we're going to talk about jazz. The first song that I ever learned in the jazz genre was Fly Me to the Moon and it's also remained one of my personal favorites of all time. The special thing about this particular piece is how easy it is to apply fun ornamentation, different styles, cool techniques. It's something that I really enjoy about this piece and others like it. Fly Me to the Moon is really, really fun. It's really beautiful. And there's so much, there's so much possibility, which I love. I think the idea of being able to interpret this song however you want is one of my favorite parts about jazz. It's so fun, it's so exciting, and not only that, but it allows me to express myself personally. Songs like Fly Me to the Moon allow me to marry my artistic desire with the song's structure. I feel like it allows me to make this song completely my own, which is really, really cool. I didn't write it, but it feels like I did. First things first, written in 1954 by Bart Howard, it wasn't until 1964, 10 years later, that the famous version by Frank Sinatra was recorded. But before that, in the same year it was written in 1954, Kay Ballard was the first recording of this piece. This song is also closely associated to the Apollo missions to the moon, and the Frank Sinatra version actually was playing on the Apollo, which is super cool. Now on to the fun stuff how to sing it, or more accurately, how I like to sing it. You're allowed to do whatever you want. I like to have a little bit of a swinging pattern go to it. I think it's really fun to have a little bit of this rocking dance kind of sensation. So, fly me to the moon and let me play among the stars. It's kind of lilting, fun, relaxing. It kind of in invites people to the dance floor. I think it feels good. For me, I always kind of lean towards uh, that swing sensation because it makes me want to dance along with myself. My other thing about jazz and even classical is I have a tendency to hold on to my favorite words or my favorite passages just a little bit so as to draw attention to them and also for myself to savor them. I love taking my favorite words and passages and treating them like a really delicious bite of my favorite food. And I think that's something that really also adds a little bit of unique character to any person's one version. So for example, let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. I like, I like just picking words that feel good and kind of playing with them. It doesn't have to fall out of time. In fact, quite the opposite. I like to be pretty in time because I love being able to collaborate with my colleagues. And with jazz, there is a lot of trust involved, right? We're all kind of communicating. We're trying to make sure that we stay together. In the savoring, you must also respect the timing. They go hand in hand. Another thing that's kind of different for me as a classical singer is the idea of having a little bit less vibrato. There are some people who believe that jazz needs to have like no vibrato, totally straight toned. There's also people who say it doesn't really matter. I'm kind of of the latter camp. I think that if you want to have vibrato in it for choice moments, go ahead. It's probably going to sound great because vibrato, in my opinion, sounds nice. I like to add the vibrato in just at the last moment on a handful of notes where there's not a lot of motion happening, right? So I'll show you an example. Fly me to the moon and let me play among the stars. It's just, it's just there to add a little bit of momentum, you know, a little bit of color. I don't add it because it needs to be there or that anybody told me it needed to be there. It's just because I enjoy it and I think it sounds good and it kind of feels like I'm moving forward. Sometimes with straight toning, personally, I feel like I lack the motion forward that I'm looking for as a singer. So having the vibrato in there kind of gives my breath some sort of activation, somewhere to go. It's not that straight tone is boring, quite the opposite. I really, really love straight tone in quite a few different areas, but 
there is a level of activation that's required for it to be full of focus and momentum. There's just a different style to it. I sometimes feel like my breath can get a little stagnant. It comes out and everything's going green and then the energy kind of wavers. There's nothing inherently wrong with that. It just takes a little bit of effort on my own part to bolster the sound and give it some sense of energy. There's also a tradition in a lot of forms of music where if you repeat something later that you try and change it up so it doesn't sound boring. This kind of happens, right? We've got this part where it's flying to the moon and then there's usually, from what I've seen and from what I've done, an interlude where the other instrumentalists can show off their prowess, you can take a little bit of a break, they can hang out with you, a lot like Gold Lion, which if you haven't seen that video, I talk a little bit about that as well. Go click on it, say hello. But then you return back to that original thing that you had just been singing, right? So what do you do to make it sound interesting? Well, ornamentation is a huge thing. Ornamentation, changing things around, making it completely your own. That being said, that doesn't mean you just randomly pick things to do. I like to have a bit of a plan. I like to have worked through things. I like to know what ornaments I'm going to be using where. The goal of jazz is to sound like it's completely freeform and off the cuff. But the actuality is most people I've met have absolutely practiced what they're going to be doing in any given performance. It's not that you go in and everything is hyper rehearsed, but it's that you've experienced your licks, right? Your ornaments so many times that they no longer are a surprise. You know exactly how to do them and where you can put them and that they make sense. You basically are memorizing all these tools, making sure that they're so much a part of your own vernacular, musically, that they become very naturally imposed into new songs. So it's, it's still free. It's still off the cuff, but it's also something that has taken many years, in a lot of cases, of practice to internalize so that it can sound so ad-libbed. A lot of people I talk to think that it just flows out of you. They're not wrong, but I definitely have practiced all of these things. I've used these licks before. I know what I would like them to be. It might change on the day of the actual performance. I'm not holding myself to anything specifically, but I'm definitely not trying to go off without ever having practiced anything. That's a lot. <laughs> and to be fair, I come from a very classically trained background, so I really like to practice. I like having a good trajectory that I understand. I like having a roadmap for my performance. It doesn't have to be really strict, but I do definitely like to understand where I'm going and how I'm going to get there. That might not be the case for all jazz musicians slash singers, but I know it is the case for myself. Another thing that I think really, really helps with this kind of song is a lack of breath pulsation. I love seeing people come in with a really consistent breath where it's not kind of popping in and out. And even though you might have a little bit of this ebbing and flowing, you don't want it to feel too aggressive at any point. It should kind of feel like you're ice skating, right? Even though you're lifting your feet up and putting them down in a different spot, you're still going the same direction, you're still going the same speed, and it's one glossy, smooth movement. You wanna have the same amount of support on each stroke. You wanna have the same sensation on the intake and exhale every time. This equality of pressure and this consistency of breath, which at the end of the day, creates a really, really pretty and glossy tone. Another trick that I use for singing in general is treating my breath or any kind of rest as an actively rhythmic portion of the song as well. What I mean by that is every inhale I have and any time I take a rest, I activate that sound of silence. I use it as something to keep me in the moment. I don't want it to take me out of it. And I think that that's a huge thing that happens is when people are singing, they kind of turn their brain off when they go on a rest or when they're taking a breath. They don't really remain activated the entire time. And so as a result, how are you supposed to, how are you supposed to maintain a support if you're constantly letting it 
fall every time there's a break, right? You want it to sound like it's involved in the music, cause it is. Without silence, everything would just be happening all at the same time. There wouldn't be any rhythms, right? You'd just have pitch changes. And that's not that fun. We like the rhythms here. We want to express the rhythms. So really involve that breath make it part of the song. That was a lot of content. I hope it was useful. And like always, this is not the be all end all. These are just some thoughts that I have when I'm singing these songs. And uh, if you have any questions, send me a message and I'll be happy to answer them. Please like, please subscribe. All right guys, till next time, bye.